For some time, the U.S. has been scheduled to draw down troops in Afghanistan by the year 2014. Most Americans have come to believe that that means U.S. involvement in the country will be over at that time. But tonight, some new information shows that is simply not the case. Ben has the reality check you won't see anywhere else. Well, let me begin by saying this agreement is not a done deal just yet. But the agreement that has now been reached by Afghani and U.S. officials states that after the year 2014, the United States is not really leaving Afghanistan. In fact, we will continue to remain in the country providing money and security for at least another 10 years. The agreement, which still has to be signed by President Obama and President Karzai, states that the United States commits to defend Afghanistan from any outside interference via diplomatic means, political means, economic means, and even military means. The agreement isn't big on specifics, but from what U.S. officials are saying, it appears the numbers would break down like this. The U.S. has said it expects to keep about 20,000 troops in Afghanistan after 2014. Those troops would mentor and train the Afghan National Security Forces while also taking part in counterterrorism operations, which seems to be what we've been doing for at least half a decade already in Afghanistan. The agreement also says that the U.S. will continue to fund the 352,000 strong Afghan security forces after 2014. It does not specify amounts, but U.S. officials have said they expect to pay about $4 billion a year, though funding would have to be approved by Congress. Does any of this sound familiar? I told you last October that the U.S. pullout of Iraq, likewise, did not mean the end of operations there. Despite the drawdown of troops, the U.S. has kept nearly 10,000 troops in Iraq as well as the largest embassy anywhere in the world. The U.S. Embassy in Iraq, it's one and a half square miles. That's big enough for 94 football fields. It costs three quarters of a billion dollars to build and it's guarded by a private army of over 5,000 for the embassy and other diplomatic outposts. And another 3,000 armed guards will protect the Office of Security Cooperation personnel. There are a lot of issues here. What happened to the idea that we're not nation building? As the president said last year, he wanted to focus on nation building here at home. And most of all, after a decade of passionate debate, we must recapture the common purpose that we shared at the beginning of this time of war. For our nation draws strength from our differences. And when our union is strong, no hill is too steep. No horizon is beyond our reach. America, it is time to focus on nation building here at home. But clearly, our latest promise to stay in Afghanistan for another decade means we continue nation building in Afghanistan and Iraq. This new agreement with Afghanistan says that the U.S. will help support Afghan economic development, health care programs, education, and social initiatives, and stresses that the U.S. remains committed to defending human rights and the right of free speech. So how much is all of this going to cost? Let's talk the money. Now, the Department of Defense will spend $11 billion to fund the last few months of the occupation and troop withdrawal in Iraq. For fiscal year 2013, the Defense Department projects spending $5 billion annually on Iraq every year moving forward. After 2015 in Afghanistan, that war supposed to be over by then, we're expecting at least $4 billion annually, which means at least $9 billion a year to remain in Iraq and Afghanistan even after these wars are supposed to be over. And that's what you need to know. If you're telling yourself that at the end of the day we have a $3.7 trillion budget, $9 billion really isn't that much, well, that may be true. But our $3.7 trillion budget is money we don't have. We only take in $2.5 trillion, which means we borrow $1.7 trillion every year. $9 billion of borrowed money being spent on two countries where our wars are over, it doesn't really make those wars sound like they're over at all. And that is Reality Check. If you'd like to make your voice heard in the story, head over to Ben's Facebook page. You can find it by searching Ben Swan WXIX.